So in this tutorial, I'm going to talk about marginal productivity of capital. Along the y-axis, we plot output, also known as y. On the x-axis, we plot capital, also known as k. When you think capital, think equipment. Not exactly that, but pretty similar to that. In this tutorial, I'm going to explain why the production function has the shape it does. For every level of capital, there's a corresponding level of output. When the amount of capital is increased, the amount of output also increases. And this is true along the entire green curve, along the entire production function. Again, capital increases, output increases. Increase in capital causes increases in output, or Y but not a constant increase. If we say that we have 10 units of capital and we get 20 units of output or 20 units of Y, and now we add 20 more units of capital, we'll increase output by 40, also 20 more units of output. Increasing capital by 20 gets me an increase in output of also 20. When capital is increased again by 20, output will increase by 10. Again, an additional increase of capital by 20 results in output increasing by 8. Increasing capital again by 20 causes output to increase by 2. Notice that the amount of output decreases even though the increase of capital is always 20. So as we increase capital, we get less and less output. This is called diminishing marginal productivity of capital. And you're probably wondering, how did you live without that knowledge? In other words, the slope, the run, and the rise. Remember, slope is rise divided by run. That's slope. The slope of the tangent line flattens out, or the slope decreases as we move up the production function, as we increase capital. Now again, the run and the rise, that's the slope. The rise can also be thought of as a change in output or the change in Y. And the run is the change in capital or the change in K. So the change in Y divided by the change in K is also the slope. Now if we put numbers to it, we say the change in capital, which is 20, and the change in output, this time it's 20, and we take the ratio of those two, then we get the slope. In this case, it's equal to 20, which is 40 minus 20, divided by 20 again, which is 30 minus 10, and this, of course, equals 1. And that would be roughly the slope of the tangent line. Put that right there. Put that back. And that back. Basically the slope of the tangent line. Now I can also calculate the slope of the tangent line at other places along the curve. Such as here. So now we have the change in y, which is 10. which is 50 minus 40, divided by the change in capital, which is 20. In this case, it's 50 minus 30. This is equal to 1 divided by 2, which is 1 half. And this is the same as 0.5. Or 
put 0.5 right there. Hopefully you're getting the hang of it now. I'm putting all this stuff back where it belongs. The next area looking at is equal to 0.4, which is just 8 divided by 20, which is a change in output divided by the change in capital. The next area is 0.1, which is 2 divided by 20, which again is the change in output divided by the change in capital. So the slope of the line is less or smaller as we move up the production function, meaning adding more capital, we get less and less output as we add more capital, less marginal output. A lot of times the same idea is put into tables like this one, and I'm going to show you how this works as well. Let me put the graph back in so you can see the relationship between the graph and the table. That 10 is that 10 in the table, that 30 is that 30, and that 50 is that 50. So the capital column matches the capital axis. Now, that 20 is that 20, that 40 is that 40. So hopefully you're understanding that column matches the y-axis or the output axis. And let me move it over again so you can see the last column. That 1 is that 1. That 0 0.5 is equal to that 0 0.5, and that's the same thing as 0 0.5. That 0 0.4 is that 4, 0.4. So you can see how the, the tables develop follows the same idea as the graph itself. The same calculations can be made from the table as in the graph. So we have 40 minus 20, that 40, that 20, which is a change in y, divided by the change in k, which is that 30 minus that 10, and that equals, hopefully it equals 20 over 20 which is equal to 1. So I can use the table to calculate the marginal productivity of capital as well. And again, that's the marginal productivity of capital, or an introduction to the idea. So party more, study less.